hello! I just thought it was time to do a bit of a studio catch-up and boy did I have a week last week. You may have seen the community post I put up that we actually had to evacuate from my father's place so I thought I'd talk a bit more about that today because it was a whole drama and yes I'm just getting over it now and it was pretty scary I do have to say. So for a bit of context to catch you all up, my father lives in the small country town of Clunes which is about two hours outside of Melbourne and the nearest largest city is Ballarat. He actually needed surgery last week that's why I went out there because I needed to care for him and he needed someone to take him to and from Ballarat Hospital because it was a day procedure and I won't go too much into that but he will actually require another surgery probably in another month but this was more the exploratory one that they do and so I went out there to spend some time with him and also just to take him to his appointments but in the meantime the week before we'd had some really hot weather because it's summer in Australia and of course it's bushfire season and a fairly large bushfire had started up to the west of Clunes and Ballarat. A pretty extensive one, I think it was about 20,000 hectares or a couple of hundred kilometres long and they were doing their best to contain it but it was out of control for quite a long time. A number of homes were lost really sadly but I don't think anyone lost their lives because the warning systems we have in place in Victoria are absolutely spot on and they always give as much warning as they can for people to clear out of the area when there's a bushfire but on the day that I drove out to my father's there was still smoke in the air and the bushfires weren't under control but I really did have to go out there to take my dad to this appointment. On my way driving out there I took a couple of pictures and I'll put them up so you could just see the smoke haze in the distance and it was all over Ballarat but when I got out to Clunes it was actually quite clear. But of course the wind direction was pushing the smoke towards Clunes and within a few hours this huge smoke cloud had come towards us. It was quite freaky looking at that. And the rest of the day we just had to stay inside because it stank so badly outside of this really thick yucky bushfire smoke. And I, I took some screenshots of the warning page showing the area in red and yellow where the bushfires are and then that blue area is where all of the smoke haze is. So that fortunately actually cleared out by the evening because the wind changed direction thankfully and so for the next couple of days it was actually really clear. Of course in the meantime my father had to go into the hospital so I took him in a couple of days later and he was booked in for a morning surgery but of course it got delayed by a few hours so I think he ended up going in about half past 12 in the afternoon and and, you know I'm at home going oh this is horrible I hate waiting for news things like that but a few hours later he actually called me from the recovery room because you can take your phone in there now and he was quite a lot in pain and also his blood pressure was really high so they had to keep him obviously in recovery until such time as everything came back to normal because he's an older gentleman it sometimes takes a bit longer to recover but in the end because he was in quite a lot of pain from the procedure they'd done, they decided to keep him in overnight and I'm really glad they did because I would have just been freaking out because right at that same time I was looking at the warning page and this is what it had looked like for a while. So basically the binoculars on the right just underneath is where Clunes is and you can see where all of the fires are just to the left there, very uncomfortably close. And as I was looking it actually changed and that yellow bit there came out to include clunes just on the edge there and here's a closer look so you can see that dot of clunes is actually in that yellow area. This advice message is being issued for the following places including clunes in there. They're basically saying there's a bushfire that was not yet under control and is still active in the area. Dangerous fire conditions are predicted for tomorrow, Wednesday 28th of February. Anyone still in these areas should leave tonight or early tomorrow morning. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. My poor father's in overnight at the hospital. And because I was stressing over that, I had a mini meltdown over the fact that now I was going to really have to evacuate. And I'm going, well, where am I going to go? I'm going to have to go back to Melbourne because I don't have anywhere else to stay. But my father's in the hospital and oh my God, the stress was just unbelievable. Believable. So I had to tell him that I was going to have to leave the place and that he couldn't just come straight home and of course this didn't really help him either. He's just woken up from a surgery and he's still in pain so he was freaking out too and I was telling him to you know stay calm because I had 
everything under control. But in the end, it actually worked out okay because they had kept him overnight. I was able to basically pack all of my stuff and put it back in the car and then I packed a bunch of dad's gear as well. Obviously I couldn't take the whole house with me so I took the things that were most important and I packed them into the car. The following morning he told me they were going to release him about 11 o'clock and I was thinking oh it's a bit late because I then have to drive the two and a half hours back to our place in Melbourne and I wasn't looking forward to driving in the really hot weather because it was going to be about 38 degrees Celsius that day with really strong winds potentially coming in the afternoon which is why they had told everyone to move because the winds were going to go westerly and that would have made clunes directly in the firing line so to speak. In the half an hour it took me to drive from Coons to Ballarat, my father had actually spoken with the nurses and the doctor getting them to fast track his actual discharge. So by the time I got to the hospital about half past nine he was actually ready to go and we were able to leave I think just a bit before 10 o'clock. So we got back to Melbourne around half past 12 in the afternoon. Thank goodness I was so glad to get home and see Nick and the cats as well and just come home to my stuff and my bed. In the end, there wasn't as much of an emergency as they predicted because the firefighters actually got the fire under control during the day and the wind didn't change as quickly as they predicted. So it was, I think, quite smoky in Clunes and I know they had a power cut for a while, but no one was in any danger. But I'm so super glad we came back to Melbourne because I slept so heavily and if I'd have been out in Clunes I probably wouldn't have gotten a wink of sleep worrying about it so yes it was the right thing to do uh, but I was absolutely exhausted last week as was dad we kept him at our place for a couple of days and then took him home again just before the weekend so he could spend a few days recovering just on his own you know he wanted his stuff back and all of that stuff I can totally understand but yeah it was a drama and I really could have done without that if it had just been taking dad to and from the hospital it would not have been anywhere near as stressful but just having to evacuate as well oh I've never had to do that before in my life and it was not an experience I would wish on anyone so that was my eventful week and even my watch showed that I was having stress here's a couple of days where it's tracked my stress so on the Sunday here, the orange bit is when I'm actually driving out to Clunes because of having to focus and keep my eyes on the road the whole time. So, you know, it's a little bit stressful and also driving a significant distance. But the rest of the day, I was quite relaxed. And so by Tuesday in the morning, this is when I would dropped him off. And, you know, I was a little bit stressed, but mostly relaxed. In the afternoon here, you could see where it's just spiking up orange. And that's when that the evacuation notice had come through and I was running around the house like a chicken with its head off. Oh my lord. And then the following day, that's all of the morning, basically me getting everything packed into the car, going to the hospital, picking up dad, driving home, and I left my watch off for the rest of the day so it didn't take any more recordings. But yeah, that was quite interesting just to see how stressed I actually was. Then on Sunday, there's just an example of a regular day of me relaxing. So I'm feeling a lot better now. I've gotten a lot of sleep and a lot of rest. But I really hope I don't have to repeat that again anytime soon. But like I said, my dad is actually going to have to have another surgery and this one's going to be a lot more major. I don't really want to go into the details of it because that's his private life. But there is a lot of hope that once he's had the surgery, it's actually going to fix the issue. And hopefully he won't need to have any more after that. I'm going to worry about that when the time comes but it's basically just whenever they set a time for it and then I'll have to go out there again. But I'll deal with that. I've still got heaps of stuff actually packed in my bags. I unpacked my suitcase, but I've got my laptop and all of my filming gear still packed for the most part. So I could just take it all out again with me when I go next time. I did actually do a bit of filming while I was out there, but I didn't get to finish the video. So I'm hoping to do that here and then post it up maybe next week. I'll see how I go with that. But I took this Cryjoofy paint box out with me and I've actually used it so I'm going to do a follow-up video on that to showing you what I've put in here and how I used the box to do some paintings. This has actually been really great and I love this so much so I'm super happy I bought it. 
I also took the bag that I got from Jazza, that carry-all bag, and that's actually ended up being my laptop bag because it just fits all of my filming gear perfectly. So I moved all of my art gear out of it and that's in a different bag. I'm kind of regretting that purchase. It was stupidly expensive and as so many of you mentioned in my video unboxing it, it's way overpriced. I totally agree with you there. But we live and learn and I am actually using the bag for a purpose so that's something Thing. Oh, and Nick bought me a treat. He's so sweet. He got me this little notebook case. It's by Sennelier. I think it's actually fake leather, but it feels really nice. And it came with two little sketchbooks inside. This one here is more of a regular sketchbook for pencils, but it does actually have quite textured paper. And then the other one is a watercolor sketchbook, and I've got that upside down. Brilliant. There we go. That also has really nice cold pressed paper and it also has perforation so you can pull the pieces of paper out. I actually had one of these books which I got in New Zealand a couple of years ago and I still hadn't used it. So I thought I'd put that in here first. This is a Le Voyageur book cover or something. I looked around for it online. It's not very common, so I don't even know if you can really get these. He got this for me at Melbourne Etching Supplies, which I did a tour on a few months ago, and they've got a couple of stores around Melbourne. I've got my little notebook inside the pouch thing here. What would you call it? A pocket, that's the word I want. <laughs> so it basically sits in there. It's a little bit of a tight fit, so I do need to stretch this out a bit. But I've also stuck some pens and pencils and an eraser on this side. And in here, I've also got my tiny little paint palettes. I've got both of them. There we go. So they fit inside there. So I just decided to put those in there. But this is basically now a mini kit that I can take with me in my handbag, because normally I have a much smaller handbag. And I've also got a paintbrush there. So I love this. I've been painting in it a little bit. I did one of Trixie and then I've got another couple random things that I painted in here. So this is just really nice. I love it so much and thank you to Nick for giving it to me. It was such a welcome gift after the stress of last week. Otherwise, not much is happening. I just really need to buckle down and try and get some work done between now and when I have to go back out to Clunes because I do like to schedule up a few videos before I leave. I did that this time and I still have a couple of videos in my schedule that will come out at their allotted times, but I do need to catch up and make a few more videos. I know a few people might say, you know, take it easy, you don't have to make videos, but I actually do this because it keeps me sane and I really need to maintain just a nice routine for myself because it is so much better for my mental health when I've got work to do and just following my regular routine. I find if I take too much time off then I actually start to get quite depressed and dwell on things so it's much better for me to keep busy. Of course I'm not going to do it to the point of burning out but just maintaining my regular schedule and also just try and go with the flow a little bit but I've got quite a few videos that I'm planning to make so my schedule at the moment will probably be mostly once a week but I might slot in a midweek video here and there. Just the usual thing really. Whatever I can manage at the time. So that's all I've got for today. I just wanted to catch you up on that and tell you about my adventures last week. And I really don't need any more adventures at the moment. I can tell you that. <laughs> They're so exhausting. Here's a couple of other videos you might want to watch in the meantime. And I hope you're having a great day. I'll see you all again really soon in my next video. Swatch you later. Bye!